Well, don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jacob Moore, and I'm about to show you that with the proper skills and or training, you yourself can learn how to track these elusive creatures. Another important thing to think about is self-defense. The real woods are nothing like what you see in Sleeping Beauty and Snow White. The real woods can be a savage place full of dangerous creatures, and you need to be ready and willing to defend yourself if necessary. But, unless you're going hunting, I wouldn't recommend bringing a gun or bow and arrow. These are very obvious, and creatures will see you coming from a mile away. And that's why something subtle, such as this knife, or this machete, are very nice. Because they can be hidden for the most part, and animals are usually unfamiliar with this primitive technology nowadays. Although, I find the best self-defense alternative is a good walking stick. Not only does it have superior range, but you can fight multiple enemies at once, which I found out once was very useful at fighting a pack of coyotes. Now that you have the proper tools and attire, it's time to get out there and find those animals. Tracking animals in the winter is especially easy, as tracks are very commonly found in the snow. These tracks right here have been left by the elusive gray squirrel, a species I've been tracking unsuccessfully for many months. And I'm only about 20 feet from my house, so this is an exceptional find. However, this creature is clearly not afraid of human beings and may in fact lash out if startled. Ah. There you are, you squirrel. Get back here and face me like a man. Ah, I hate squirrels. Another thing to take note of is the markings you might find on trees. Now I've just found this right here. It appears that this young tree has been bitten in half by something very large. Perhaps something very dangerous as well. And I fear it might be a moose as they are occasionally found in this area. Moose are perhaps the most dangerous creatures on this planet, so if you see these markings, proceed with caution. Uh, oh, oh, oh. So, I've just had a close encounter with a large moose. Uh, fortunately, I wasn't able to get it on camera, but I just barely escaped with my life. But, like I said, the woods can be very dangerous. Oh, look, feces. Jackpot. <sighs> so it's a bit frozen, but all feces has a story to tell. These are about dime size or smaller and very close together. So you can tell that this is most likely rabbit feces. We have a nice sample of deer scat or feces. If you're unsure about the feces you're looking at, uh, refer to the target list that you made earlier because feces is one of the most important tools in tracking wild animals. Although tracks and feces is important, don't forget to every now and again just stop and listen. The calls of animals are never mistaken. They always tell you where the animals are at that exact moment. And if the animals know that you're tracking them, they can lay down false sets of tracks and feces patterns to throw you off their trail. So Make sure to mix it up a bit. So you've seen the signs, you think you know where the animal is, and you're ready to start approaching. But first, you need to cover your scent. Going as your normal human self just won't cut it, since most animals have an extremely strong sense of smell, especially deer. You always want to try to stay upwind of the deer so the wind carries your scent away from them rather than towards them. Although, I find nothing works better at covering your scent than a little deer urine. There are many ways to collect deer urine, none of them particularly good. But uh, a little urine never hurt anybody. So here we go. A little here, a little there. Bada bing. Bada boom. And now you're invisible to the deer. And you can start approaching them. Now, remember 
to stay quiet and calm as you approach the animal. Startled animals can be very dangerous. And if it's mating season, especially turkey mating season, you have to be very careful not to be seen, otherwise the males might attack you. You want to try to stay at least 40 feet away, a nice safe distance. And if there's any tall brush or grass, then you want to try to hide yourself from their sight. Let's try to find that. So when you finally see the creature you're after, you want to try and get photographic evidence of it so you can show your friends. You can also try sketching the creatures, which I have found to be a nice alternative. Also, if you're trying to actually capture the creature, I prefer to use stealth over strength. Well, that was a fun little experience, wasn't it? We saw a squirrel, caught a chicken, and barely escaped with our lives from a moose. Now you know all the skills needed to become a successful wildlife tracker. Knowing these skills is very useful. It can be used in hunting, sightseeing, and pest control if need be. You can even make yourself a living off of it.